here we go. All right, friends, I showed you this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smack that off with my axe. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. So friends, he drilled a well here and he's got stuff all over this stump. Like you can see it. See it? It's concrete and mud. And I've got to make a high stump here. But I am going to crack a little of that off with the axe. Just, just to where I'm going to cut. We've got root rot. You can tell by the swelling of the buttress, friends. You see that? So I'm, I'm literally just going to crack this a bit. And right about here. That doesn't sound good to me. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's better. <coughs> that, this tree's hollow. It's hollow. Yeah, you can hear it. That is hollow. Wow. So, oh yeah, that's not good. Wow, that's leaning hard. Holy cow. It ain't going that way. Hmm. I might come up a bit, maybe. We'll see. I might put a back cut in this as well. Just to save me out on the lean here. There's where we can get our undercut. There we go. If I put my undercut in this, like, look at this. And I, I, uh, it gives me more of this action. It's not good. And if you don't mind, I might, I might shoot to the right a little bit. No problem. Either way, is that any, okay? Anywhere is good there, yeah. Yeah, because that way I can utilize that crown a little bit. It'll knock a couple limbs off that fur, but oh uh, yeah. Here, here's the call. This is this is what we do. I'll show you so you understand where I'm coming from, friends. Oh, so it's cleaned up. Hello. Hi. Good to see. UPS guy says hi. Oh, right on. I like that guy. He says, Move your truck. Oh, he's a good man. Yeah. Is he okay? Oh, he's gone. Good. So friends, here, here's the deal. This is why there are standards and steps to take to cut a tree down or to drop a tree or fall a tree or fall a tree or whatever you want to call it. This is, we got root rot, friends. We, we got all this, okay? So, but we're not going back there. We can't, we can't do any of this. I would love nothing better to just slap that sucker right through there, but it's not, it's not the deal. I could ram it through there, but I do not want to get hung up and have some crazy stuff. There's a woodshed, there's a freaking... You know how that goes. Is, is that septic there or is that a well as well? Uh, it's cistern. Cistern, so water, water, water cistern. cistern, that's right. So as you look here, she's got a bow in her. She's laying back, but when you come under here, friends, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> so she's, she's bone heavy back, but it's got a little weight, little limb turning back. So you know what? I could do a back cut. I could do an undercut. I think I'll just go narrow undercut on this one. I, I'm going to, I would hate for that to settle on me quickly. Depends on how much root rot's in there. So I, I'm going to put an undercut in it and just fall it normally. And we're shooting across the stem over towards there on this side of the fur. Not there where that one went. So we're going to shoot here. So I'll just cut up. You guys can watch. It's not going to be a deep undercut. That would, that would be a bad move. This is why I stress so often on the channel, friends. Undercut depth is huge. It's huge. There's, there is a standard. Third is a nice standard. But here, I think I'm probably going more of a quarter so that I got lots of lift I can play with.
and a good smack with an axe gives you an indication of what's going on. So I want to show you, friends, and I'm going to share this with you. And you might think I'm nuts, but hopefully this can assist you one day. Okay. I thought the tree was rotten. What are the indicators? Well, that sure is an indicator. The last tree we just fell is an indicator. All this stuff is indicators. These are major indicators of root rot. I know the area. Now look at this, friends. I'm talking narrow undercut, super narrow. Do you see what I did here? I put a little launch. I call it the folder. So I open this up. We can get this to fold. I don't really need to make this wider, but look at all the wood I got to play with out the back. You see, and that's where I knocked the bark off so I can slap my undercut in there. But really friends, if I had known it was this rotten, I probably had gone a little higher on the stump, but look, look at all the wood we got to play with. So that's gonna close up and bust off that stump. I could crack a little wood off that, that high side. I may do and start my back cut. The wind is blowing against us and we got this. So quite honestly, friends, it's, you make one wrong move right now, you, you've got problems because we've got freaking structures everywhere. Now I've got that tree gunned for its hole. I've got it gunned for its hole. I'm, I'm actually just gonna open this up a little teeny bit. Just watch your eyes, Captain. We're gonna go in the back. I'm gonna put you guys out the back. This is where you go right under the, you put your undercut, the deepest part of the undercut right now is underneath the, the hardest compressed wood. You wanna wedge in that hardest compressed wood right now. The high side is up here. This is our strength, is up top. So if I start right at my apex, it's not a good move. It's not a good move because of what's going on here. These are just little things, friends, that can assist your day. I'm gonna bring you here. I'm gonna put you right here so you can see the game coming down nice here. And I'm gonna show you what we do. It's pretty straightforward. You guys have seen this a lot, but I don't usually do this much commentary, but these are learning opportunities for folks. So I hope you take it. All right, this should be a good shot here. Okay, friends, I'm just going to voice over here. You see my head? I'm digging in the back. It's already leaning back. Take a look at what I got for wood there. Okay, a couple four inches. As soon as I cut, I'm up. Look how long I'm up for. See? What's it doing? Tickle, tickle. There it is. It, it gave me a sign. There it is. Right there. I see it. It's not going forward. It leaned back. It just squeaked back. If you don't get your head up, you're just wasting your time and your, your falling is not going to be smooth at all. Get your head up. I stress this on the channel all the time. Take a small wedge. You know, there's a hundred ways to skin the cat as we talk about, but in small wood, you, you, you don't want to be getting into trouble. See, I'm just placing that wedge in there. Now watch what happens when I do this. I come back around, give it a squeak. Oh, she's a little tight. So I come over, tap, tap. Move that wedge out of there a little bit and free up that power saw. There we go. That's all I need. Now I'm away because I've got control of the tree because I smashed that wedge. It's not going to crush the plastic. I'm set to go.
So friends, you probably saw what I was doing there. I was trying to get the GoPro to see the crown because I wanted you guys to see what was going on there. That freaking thing was toast. Toast. Look at friends. And it was leaning back. Or of course, oh my goodness. So friends, this is the last tree on this job. It's down in the, you know, way down the front of the property here. And there's this house up and up the way there. It's a dead dying fir. And we're just gonna fall it and leave it for him. It's kind of the last tree. I sure brought the sun in, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. That was bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, it was a little tall, isn't it? Yeah. So there's our wood. There's our nectar of the gods right there. Look at that. That, that smells so beautiful. I love that smell, yeah. You Actually, it's nice and solid. It is. That'll be, a, that'll be a nice, nice uh, wow. bit of firewood. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you, sir. Good. Friends, good evening. It is, what day is it today? Is it? It's the July 3rd. So we just got back from Clay Walker's uh, couple of, it, what a wild freak. I got stories to tell you, friends. I just, I've got stories to tell you. That's all I can tell you. Anyways, after I fell a dogwood, this is all that same job. Remember that dogwood? So we fell a dogwood. That was an EXL out of the box chain, friends, on a just a ported 372. As Donnie Walker saw, I haven't run it in a while, so I wanted to run it. EXL out of the box, which is full house chain on a 32 inch. Okay. We cut that dogwood with that. After that, we went and cut that fur down, that small fur that we're at right now. I didn't like the way it was cutting. I wanted just a touch more of a grab and that's pretty normal on a hand file for me. Ground chain, different story. So friends, I didn't have a flat file with me and I wasn't running back to the pickup. That's just an old belt that I keep in the truck with the wedges and just, just got no suspenders, you know, just that quick one or two tree deal. <laughs> Anyways, I've been caught without a flat file lots and I need to get my rakers down. I wanna share this with you. So I quickly just cracked the rakers down, a swipe with a round file. Now, I just want to show you this. This is, you, You're never stuck. You guys know me. And, and, and my theory is you're never stuck. You're just never stuck. You can always get out of a bind. So there's a little trick that, that I learned years ago just by on, going on the fly. Absorb this one. It's a good one. All right, friends. I'm just going to quickly just show you the difference. It was batting against the wood a little bit, and I don't like batting against the wood. It's brand new chain out of the box. I want to, I want to show you something. This is a bone stock EXL chain. I can feel it. It's 
I personally, if on a, if I'm on a hand file, if I was going to grind this thing, friends, square grind, I would leave it right. I would leave it the way it is. But it's we're out in the bush. I'm cutting. This chain's been on it since I got Donnie's saw. Now, come on down with me, and I want to show you something here. I don't have my flat file in my unless it's hiding on me, but I don't believe I have my flat with me right now. So, if you're out in the bush and you get in a bind, friends, and you 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 just can't, you got a bunch of lemon and small processing to do, and you need to grab your chain. I've been in this situation over the years. I just get in here with my thumb. It doesn't have to be a uh, my, your thumb. It could literally be uh, a chip. Cut yourself a little piece of wood and just stay in front, right? Stay in front of your tooth and just have a guide and go like this, friends. Watch. I'll get, I'll get so that my partner can see. See this? That's a round file filing your raker. Now, usually what I do is this, okay? This is what I do. You see my finger? This is, and look what happens to that raker. It just gives it a slight little nibble in the wood. So I'm actually gonna do this right now. One stroke with a round file. All it's gonna do is it's gonna allow this saw to dig down to its bottom end because it's not doing that right now the way it's, the way it's cutting. And it, we're in small wood, it's not that big of a deal. But this is what I do when I get caught without a flat file. I file my finger and I just nip the top of that raker there. Look at our cameraman, friends. We got to give this guy a shout out. <laughs> so that, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty good enough. Hey, friends, you see what I mean? So that, that's all I do. And oh, there's one that was maybe, maybe I hit that tooth or something. I would reckon we're there. We are done. Bang. So friends, it's just a little trick. I show these little tricks when I get caught in a pinch. You're never stuck. You know me, friends. You're never stuck. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's just, uh, this will be hard on your ears. Yeah, gotcha. Final countdown. The drifter and his wife are just coming on a long journey coming home. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's, that's the thing about computers. You know what's better than a video? The real thing. Here's Buck and Billy Ray right here. This is my brother right here. We're going to need a mic for him. This is Larry. Larry, say hi to everybody. This is Clay Walker's private jet. A lot of close friends in Oregon, actually. Timber cutters in the in the big woods down here. Did you say in the big wood? I did say big wood. You Canadians are all bragging. I said big wood. Well, I'm a steamroller, baby. I'm on a roll all the way. We were in a place called Pocatello, or Pocatello, Idaho, you know, the potatoes. <laughs> Cool and nifty too. Far out. Ne 
Nido. Faro Nido. Cool. Faro Nido. Groovy cool.